having one of those mornings where you don't want to get up. Oh. So someone asked me to talk about Alaska, and there's so many other things I wanted to mention, too. I like that Michelle Smart said, Do I have what I need for today? I get that. It's boring, but I get that. And that 30-second cleaner, I can't remember who mentioned that. I'm going to look into that. There's something else called TPS or TSP or TSV or, you know, it's a big long word and it, it comes in a big bucket. I remember my friend Joe Romp telling me about it. He had a trailer up in um, Hudson, Florida. And uh, <coughs> I don't have my coffee because I don't know what I did wrong this morning. I, it's like I can't see straight. So I put my coffee, because it sat too long in the, in the in the pot, it got cool. I put it in the microwave. I thought I pressed one. And I'm like, how come it hasn't beeped yet? And I go over there, and the minutes are like three minutes and something. I'm like, holy cow, what did I press? And... My coffee looked like it was about to combust and go into flames. I think it's very hot and now I can't drink it. And my throat's dry. That's beside the point. Yeah, that stuff, that powder in a container. He'd add it with water and then he'd take a, a brush and he'd wash the side of the trailer. Now, I don't know what condition I'm going to be in if I try to do that. But I, I, what if I just took, like, just the front, and then I washed that, and then I just rolled it out with some white paint? I have a really old bucket <laughs> since I moved here from 2018. It's big, you know, when I'm five-gallon, and uh, I'd have to have someone drag it out of there for me. But, you know, I think I'm going to I'm gonna go talk to this guy that one of the other women told me did the underside of her trailer for really cheap just one portion of it materials are expensive too but let's not go there i don't want to anyway yeah yeah i i get all these thoughts in my mind you know um i i redid my figures on staying here and if we keep getting at least a 2.3 increase um, in COLA for Social Security, I I could do it, even at three years and possibly beyond that. So if I just stay stagnant the way I am, um, yeah, I I have other things to figure out too, you know. And somebody else asked me about. You know, my car, why would I give up a 2018 to get an older SUV? Um, my car is a sub subcompact. It's really tiny. And I did try with a, um, oh my gosh, what a nightmare. I tried. I cut this foam pad down. I bought this foam pad. This is when Dennis was still alive and I was planning on leaving here when he died, you know. I took that trip up to Maine, and I got to tell you, it seriously made me rethink the whole living on the road thing. That was tough, right? But somebody wanted me to talk about Alaska. The only picture I have out, because I don't want to dig through my closet and have to pull everything out, is this picture here. We were at the, I think this is the Kmart, favorite place of cheap people, Um, that is Rachel, I think Michael's in front of her, and Denny Jr. We were going into the Anchorage Kmart, and I was like, hey, I want to take a picture of this, and Dennis always had to turn around. He liked, um, he, I liked um, more action, natural shots, and he always wanted it to be, you know, portrait type. So he turned around. I'm glad he did. He was such a crazy person. I mean, he says no 
to a $500 wardrobe that I bought my 15-year-old teenage daughter. I wanted her to have Rachel. I wanted her to have some nice clothes, right? Something fun. And she was turning 15. She was homeschooled. I wanted to give her... He says no to that, and I had to bring everything back, but I, I kept one outfit and a pair of combat boots for her, and I said, no, you're not making me return that part. And yet, he would take me on a crazy-ass journey, because I asked him to, from Maine to Idaho, up to Alaska, through um, British Columbia. Ah. Oh. If you've never been to British Columbia, dang, you ought to go. That place was like going in a rocket ship and being left into paradise, you know? Like, hey, drop me off here. Oh, it was just stunning. I, I can't even describe it. I mean, the wilderness of it. Just stunning. I'm so glad they preserve some of the wilderness instead of condoing it out. Mercy. I want my coffee. It's so hot. No. No. I wish I had an ice cube. I do have water somewhere. But where? Oh, never mind. So, <coughs> so I wanted to be the wilderness family. What a crazy person. What is wrong with me? And, uh, I... So, yeah, he... <laughs> It was, it was freaking September. And it was during October that we went across the Canadian line and we stopped at the gate into Canada. He says, where are you heading? I, we said, you know, we're going to Alaska. And he said, how long will you be gone? I said, two weeks. And he laughed at me. I'm putting down four weeks. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I learned why. Oh, my word. So we end up, um, oh, and it was just so beautiful. And we'd stop at these weird little places overnight, hotels and stuff. You know, it was cheap back then. It was cheap. The castle was so cheap. Look it up. What was it? No. Uh, I can't do the math. <laughs> Wait a minute. 81 to 91. Did we have the good van then? I'm thinking, wait a minute, Rachel was about 15, 81 to 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. It was around 1996. I'm older than dirt. And, um, yeah, things were cheap, you know, so cheap. You could do crazy shit, uh, stuff like that. Oh dear, I'm going, I'm going up in time. Okay, so we we go through and uh, oh, we stayed at one hotel, and I was like, I do not want to put my kids on on a mattress on the floor, but the um the cot they gave us or the pullout or whatever, it was so bad, and uh. And I think the kids picked up lice from there. And then it was the lice adventure. I had never dealt with lice before in my life because my kids had never gone to public school. Those were the first three kids. And, uh, yeah, that was eventful. One night, I don't know where we were. I can't remember now. Uh, I think we had gotten through the hell of... <laughs> <laughs> the hell of Alaska roads in October. Oh, my God. Well, first let me talk about when we got there. Okay, so we get to Anchorage, and um, I want to go fly out this homesteading land. It was $9,000 and maybe 11 acres or something. And we, we found a hotel, and every morning around 10 o'clock, the Oriental people who owned it would bang on this door, a couple down, and, and you're not Peran, you get out. And I'm like, oh my God, what on earth? We had to listen to that every morning, but it was a really nice little suite. We had a kitchen, we had a couple bedrooms. It was very affordable back then. And, um, 
<laughs> but it was odd, okay? And they acted like it was perfectly normal to behave this way. Ow! And, um, <laughs> I'm gonna drink it anyway. <sighs> so, that was that plane adventure when Dennis, the kids didn't want to come. They were so tired of traveling, and believe me, that was a hellish ride. It was all dirt roads. They can't pave. And it was really rutted in some areas. You had to go like 30 miles an hour, and it was just crazy. It was crazy. And we had everything with us. The ferret, the hamster, the bird. Three kids in tow and our 95 conversion van. I must have just gotten it because it was about, what, 96 when we did this insane antic. Oh, I love that conversion van. It was a Dodge Ram, short wheelbase, um, high top, I think. No, I don't think, I don't know. It felt like you could stand up in it. I, I don't remember. I don't think it was that high. I think, you know, I don't even think I have pictures of it. Oh, I love that van. I said to my husband one day, I said, I've been living on the road X amount of years. I don't remember how many it was. And I'm getting a new vehicle. You've been making me and the kids drive around in that crappy old Chevy Malibu. And I want some comforts if I'm going to keep following you. So we went looking. First, we looked at Chevys, which were totally outrageous. And he wouldn't pay the price. And then, because um, we didn't pay rent. We didn't, you know use campgrounds really um sometimes if it was a really good seasonal price um i said i practically live in my vehicle you know and so he bought me that beautiful green van with a green interior i just love green you know i love green and teal and uh, aquas you know i just anyway so um he bought me the van and and that's what we went up with and it's so comfortable oh it had some cute little lights on the side like little air well you had the regular airline lights right that you just turn on your reading lights and then it had these little runner lights right and oh it was so pretty at night when you turn them on and all sparkly and anyway so um oh seats were so comfortable oh i want my van back it got hit in an accident and that's another story and then uh it was leaking and um we were going to be going back out to Idaho, so we sold it. But back to Alaska, An Anchorage. Pull it in. Pull it in. Um, <clears throat> right. Anchorage. So we got in that plane. You know, first he had his meltdown, and then he went in, and he was totally fine. Oh, he used to drive me nuts. <laughs> I'm like crazy. And it was then that I realized that there's really no actual wilderness you're not going to be alone. I says, how are we going to get building materials out here? It was like, my unfound, I don't know. It was miles and miles, hundreds of miles. I don't know how many miles of just no roads. And he says, uh, oh, in the winter, when the, every, if the water freezes and you just take a snowmobile and a trailer and you pull everything, there'll be thousands of people out here. Well, there went my fantasy right out the door. Thousands of... I'm not, and then the woman at the land office said, Most people don't understand what it's like living in the wilds of Alaska. This land will kill you. So that made me think. Plus, I didn't want to deal with people like her. I was wondering if the lack of light, you know, light deprivation, where am I at? Well, the fantasy was over. We went and saw a few things, a mountain, something else. And then we headed back to Idaho. And on our way, it turned extremely cold. Yes, it did. And there was some snow coming down but that wasn't the worst part of it the worst part of it was black ice and I'm driving at about 30 miles an hour I'm safe I think in my poor mind and we're passing people 
down the ravine in, in, in the ditch, in the snow. One guy with his camper completely annihilated and they got a little fire and they're sitting there by the fire. I'm like, I'd stop for them, but I don't dare stop. The roads were so icy. Mm. I was so scared. I was driving, and I said, Dennis, I shouldn't be driving. He said, you're doing good, Nikki. You're doing good. You're doing fine. And, um, and you know, seeing all these people having gone off the road was very disconcerting. And then it happened. I slid. I knew what to do back then. I don't remember now because I was a, you know, New Hampshire girl, a Mainer for years. I, it just started spinning it started spinning all by itself i wasn't doing anything you couldn't put the brake on and you couldn't try to turn the wheel because this was slick okay and i see us starting to head to the the edge and this edge was particularly steep and i said oh god please please help us and uh We started to slide. We started to go toward the edge to the, you know, and we were like this. And thank God we just stopped and then just stopped. And I'm like, oh, mercy, what do we do now? Is it not gone? That, you know, and um, checked on the kids. Is everybody okay? How's the bird? Poor bird. Oh, that bird been through hell. I'm amazed it lived so long. And um, so a state trooper comes by or whatever they have up there, right? And handsome guy. Sorry, I had to mention that. Oh, I see you're all right. That's good. And we'll get a tow truck out here for you. I'm like, oh, great. More money. And uh, I said, officer, I'm so sorry. I swear to God, I was going 30 miles. Don't worry about it. I go off the road at least 10 times a day. So whatever we had to pay, we finished that. And then I was like, I got to get off the highway. So we ended up at a really nice hotel that night. And the kids, of course, wanted to stay in their room. And we ordered them a pizza or what have you. And Dennis said, let's go have a drink. And we went down to a restaurant and we had drinks and we had bruschetta. And we had some sort of dinner. I don't remember what, but I remember the bruschetta was extremely memorable. And so were the drinks. Yeah, we'd started drinking again. That's another story. And it was all my fault. And I'll tell you another time. And then, um, but boy, we had some fun times. And then we ended up, I think, back in Idaho. And uh, then I guess we went home. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me. We just were know what they call it adventurers or something and maybe that's my problem yesterday all my trouble seems so far away I think I just want yesterday back you can't go back sometimes you know I suppose you could try to recreate it, but it's not going to be like that. The kids are adults, one with his own kid. Bonnie's going to go on a great adventure. She's going to travel all over the United States trying to find where she wants to spend the next five years. She has that freedom now. Mom, I didn't cash your birthday check birthday was in February, right? I said, why? She says, Mom, I don't feel right. She's the one who wrote me the cute little poem when she was younger that I read the other day. She says, I'm going to rip up the check. I said, but that was your birthday money. It was only $50. She said, Mom, I'm making $200 a day. And I, I'm not taking your money. 
bless her. So she's going to go on grand adventures, and I'm so excited for her. I want her to do the things that I got to do. I want her to see the United States. and But she's concentrating. She's not going all over the place. She wants to check out Utah, Salt Lake City area. She wants to check out some areas in Colorado. And then she's also going to go with uh, her bestie friend from the time she was eight years old. They were dancers together. Um, Allie kept dancing. And uh, she's actually an instructor and does other things too. Went to college as well. And um, they're going to go down to North Carolina to check that out. Asheville. And uh, see if they might want to live there. So that's pretty much what's going on now. And uh, I'm just glad she's going to be traveling. And I'm so glad Dennis would be so happy to know that she's thriving. We worried about our youngest the most. Not having her father at such a young age, 20, 22, when he died. I was 18 when my father died. Feels like just falling off a cliff. It's such an awful feeling when the provider in the head of the household, you know, guys were head of the household back then. Dennis was head of the household in my family, you know. He wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> He's like, mm. So, yeah. I miss you, Denny. I think about you all day long. I dreamt about him again last night, and he's always driving the car. Whenever I'm with him, he's driving the car. Sometimes we get out and we do some things, and then there's people. Last night, my girlfriend, well, former, Kathy, who we took all over Vermont, she was in it. What a strange dream. What a strange dream. Well, that's it. I've talked enough. That's the end of my morning video. I think this is going to take forever to download with a hot spot. But I'm doing my best. Today, I'm calling um, Verizon. I'm going to get internet for a month because Bonnie has to have internet to be able to do her remote job. And it's got to be good internet. So it's $50 for the month. And she said she'd pay for it. But I, I want to treat her. I, I want to do for my kids. Even if I don't have that much. And when I say poverty. You know that's the government guidelines. That's not my guidelines. I feel pretty good about life. I mean. I have what I need. Some of what I want. Like wigs. Of course, I'm going to have to pay interest on it because I charged it. But um, but at least I get to have it. And before, you know, when we moved in here, I got decent furniture. I got my old furniture. I have a really, really good bed. That bed is, like, brand new. The other one's not so great, and I'd love to replace the mattress. Bonnie never listened to me. Keep that mattress cover on that mattress. I forgot. And so now, you know, it's just not... A great mattress anyone she'd spill things on it and it's all stained and mercy that was a Stearns and Foster too I highly recommend Stearns and Foster's they are made to last if you get the firm one and then you put your cushy pad on top of it oh it it lasts forever I have it covered with a mattress cover and then I put another sheet on it and then I got my topper and that's covered with a sheet as well so you know it works. Um, it kept my mattress like brand spanking new. It's amazing. <clears throat> His, actually. Mine's gone. I gave that to my kids. There wasn't room enough for, you know, a king-size bed in here. Okay, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I will stop rambling now and enjoy my coffee because it's cool enough that I may drink it. Bye.